Okay, Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of uh, Yahweh Shai. All praises and glories due to Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, Bashem Rakakwadash, who have given us this knowledge, this understanding, this truth, especially in the times that we're living in. And believe you me, these times are about to get worse, a whole lot worse, before it gets better. When is it going to get better? When Yahweh Shai comes and destroys this society, destroys Esau's kingdom with a mighty destruction, and then sets up his kingdom on the planet Earth. And his kingdom, pursuant to 2 Peter 3 and 13, his kingdom is going to be a kingdom of righteousness. And by default, his kingdom is going to be the kingdom of Israel, which in re reality is really the kingdom of Yahweh Shai. But... It's also known as the kingdom of Israel, okay? And he's going to have uh, King David sitting on the throne right beneath him, you know? There's a scripture where it speaks about the order. As it, To roughly paraphrase that scripture, it goes, and uh, every man have his order, okay? And the order starts with Yahweh Shai and then King David all the way down, okay? The rest of the 144,000. But anyway, um, the name of this video will be called Good and Bad, right? Because, you know, as of late, we've seen that... <laughs> I don't even know what to call that guy, man. Uh, from the ISUPK. And uh, put out a video where he said he would counsel uh, Chris Rock in um, handling that situation. Those of you, unless you've been living under a rock, <laughs> you know about the altercation, the supposed altercation between Chris Rock and Will Smith on, you know, at the Academy Awards, where uh, Will Smith didn't like a joke that Chris Rock told about his, his demonic wife. And, uh, he got up from his chair and he went supposedly and slapped, um, you know, Will Smith, that is. He got up from his chair and he went up to uh, Chris Rock and slapped him in the face, supposedly, which was all staged. And uh, went, went back to his chair, he sat down and he said, keep my wife's motherfucking name out your mouth. You know, a whole bunch of histrionic drama, okay? And we believe that that was staged. One of the reasons is, as of late, the Academy Awards, the ratings have been very low. So they'll do a pu publicity stunt like that to boost up their ratings. That's just one example of proof that, that the thing was staged. Another example is if you look at it, you could see Chris Rock was bracing for the slap. Like he already, like it was rehearsed. But anyway, this goon, I'll call him a goon, because he's <laughs> from ISUPK. That's what they got over there. They got goons. Anyway, this goon said that he would, uh, in the video, he would counsel Chris Rock by telling him, look, if you want to get back at Will Smith for that slap, you can sleep with his wife. You can go get the best drugs and sleep with his wife. Basically, that was the uh, the gist of the video, right? <laughs> and brother's been doing videos on it. Now, this is the same guy, that goon from uh, ISUPK. This is the same guy that said, if I say that John the Baptist is a plate of fish, pass me the hot sauce. That's what he said. So after hearing a guy say that, you already know that this guy is totally out of his fucking mind. And you don't need to listen to him. Okay? Nevertheless, he did that video. And uh, he claims to be in the truth. This goon from the ISUPK. So this is where I'm coming in with my video. To let you brothers know. Especially you brothers that are new to this ministry of ours. This thing of ours. Like I like to call it. You're going to have the good as well as the bad. The Heavenly Father called both. The good are the, the, uh, 
men that Yahweh Shem Yahshai has truly chosen and gave, gave, given them the Holy Spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit, you won't be teaching crap like that. Like what you heard that goon said from the ISUPK, you wouldn't be teaching nonsense like that if you have the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, as the scripture have said, you're going to speak sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. All right? And when you look up the word sound, it means healthy. Doctrine that you can be edified by. You, your faith can be built up. Your knowledge can be built up the right way. Not the wrong way, the right way. Okay, those are the individuals Yahweh Hashem Yahshai have chosen. Okay, they're the true teachers, the true prophets, the true apostles. Then you have the bad ones. Okay, and you know, I have the scripture here. It's in the book of Malachi, which we're going to get to. Uh, according to the book of Malachi, you, you are supposed to discern between the two. You know, it's your job to discern between the two, the good and the bad. Who are the good teachers and who are the bad teachers? Okay? Obviously, you stay away from the bad teachers and you cling to the good. Okay? So, this is what we're going to discuss in this video. I found out how to do a split screen on my, uh, my Samsung phone. So, this is why I have the screen split. All right? Uh, I copied... Um, well, not copied. I, I wrote down the scriptures that I will be focusing in this lesson on my uh, notepad. And I have the Bible on the other side, the right side of your screen. So the first scripture we're going to go into is the book of Ezekiel, the 14th chapter, which I have here. And we're going to go down to the 8th verse. Because this is what it's all about. It's all about teaching these scriptures. All right? It's all about teaching the scriptures. So, this is Ezekiel 14 and 8. This is the Heavenly Father speaking through the prophet Ezekiel. And, and it says, And I will set my face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb. Now, when you read the I just want to get to the point. I don't want this video to be too long. When you read the whole content, it's talking about a false prophet or a false teacher, a false apostle. The word apostle just means sent away. Any guy that claims to be in the ministry and that is false, this is what the Heavenly Father said concerning that guy or concerning that person. And I will set my face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb. So, you have these guys that really don't belong in, in the ministry, but then again, they do. They were brought in to be a sign and a proverb. All right? Because the Heavenly Father is going <laughs> to... The Heavenly Father is going to put the wapo zappo on them. And they're going to be a sign to the other men why the Heavenly Father must be feared. Okay? <laughs> Let me say that again. The Heavenly Father is going to put... You know what I mean by the wapo zapo, whatever it may be. And they're going to be assigned to the other men, the men that the Heavenly Father truly wants. They're going to be assigned to those men to fear the Heavenly Father. You see what the Heavenly Father did to that guy? You see what he did to that guy? You see? That's why it says here, and will make him a sign and a proverb. So that the bad guy is a sign. He's a sign why you don't provoke Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. And that's what these false teachers are doing. There's something called a provocation. The, the word provoke or the word provocation comes from provoke, provoke. So these guys, <laughs> these, these guys that don't belong in the ministry, but they were called in the ministry to be the bad guys. These guys, whether they know it or not, they're provoking the Heavenly Father. Every time they do some stupid shit, they're provoking the Heavenly Father. So the Heavenly Father can bring his wrath. Right? So every time they provoke the Heavenly Father, right? <laughs> Eventually, the Heavenly Father is going to bring his wrath upon that individual. And based upon that, other individuals will see and they will fear the Heavenly Father. See? That's how it goes, man. 
Okay, and I'm reading it here, Ezekiel 14 and 8. <laughs> That's why the smartest thing we can do is to fear the Heavenly Father. Fear Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai, man. The Heavenly Father and His Son. Okay? Because right now, the Heavenly Father have said He's given all judgment to His Son. So it's really Yahweh Shai. Okay? As a matter of fact, there's a scripture where it says, um, yeah, the fanned is, the, not, the, not the fan, the fanned, the, I'm sorry, not the fanned. The fan is in, <laughs> trying to get the word out, the fan is in Yahweh Shai's hand. And he can turn it up. In other words, the heat is in Yahweh Shai's hand. He can turn it up when he wants to. In other words, he's in charge. To put it bluntly, he's in charge. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, have given him that position because of what he did, you know, sacrificing himself on the cross. That was that was a blessing that he received, Yahweh Shai received, right? So it's really Yahweh Shai. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, the phone had to chime on that one. <laughs> and by the way, we're here to push Yahweh Shai. We're here to up, uplift, uplift Yahweh Shai. Okay. That's what we're here to do. We're not here to uplift ourselves like certain guys are doing. Okay. <laughs> and I will set my face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb. And I will cut him off from the midst of my people. So eventually, that, that bad teacher, however the Heavenly Father is going to do it, eventually the Heavenly Father is going to cut him off. You see? Did you see that? And I will cut him off from the midst of my people. So don't worry about these false teachers with their crazy doctrines. Eventually, they're going to be cut off. Okay? They're going to be cut off. Because they don't, well, we're going to see in, uh, uh, Jude where it says, having not the spirit. We're going to get to that. I don't want to move too far ahead. So, uh, reading those words again, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people. See? <laughs> and ye shall know that I am the Lord. What do you think it means, ye shall know that I am the Lord? Meaning you're going to see his power when he cuts him off. The way he's going to cut him off. Remember, the Heavenly Father, one of his titles is the King of Terrors. And since he's passed all judgment to his son, I would say that his son right now is the King of Terrors, right underneath his father. Okay? So when it says, and you shall know I am the Lord, you're going to know who did that to that individual, why he went out the way he did. Okay? And since we're in the time, let's not forget, we're in the time of judgment, man. And judgment is going to begin where, brothers? 1 Peter 4 and 17, judgment is going to begin at the house of Israel, meaning judgment is going to start with those that know that they're Israelites, whether they be good or bad. Huh? So I want you, especially you new brothers to this, I want you to know this. Okay? Let's go to the next verse. We're going to read the ninth verse. And if that prophet, oh, I'm sorry, and if the prophet be deceived, now Job 12 and 16 tells us what? The deceived and the deceiver are his. In other words, the Heavenly Father can bring you in to deceive you into this ministry. You could be deceived. Okay? And this is why it's so important to pray. And when we pray, we say, Oh, Yahweh Shimei Hashai, please give me the right spirit. You know, King David wisely said, and I always quote this, he said, um, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Yahweh Barshimi Arshad. That's what King David said. Those are wise words, man. And, and, and that's the attitude that we have. We that understand this thing of ours, we're saying, let our words and the meditation of our heart, what's the meditation of our heart? Our thoughts. Let our words and our thoughts be acceptable in your sight, O Yahweh Barshimi Arshad. Acceptable in what? In righteousness. Okay? So with that kind of mindset, you're going to watch what you say. You're going to watch what you teach. Now, the bad guys, right? <laughs> the, the goons, <laughs> the, uh, 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 the ones that don't really belong in this ministry, but they were called to be made examples of, they don't think like that. All right? They do, they do not think like that. Okay? So, the ninth verse, And if the prophet be deceived... When he have spoken a thing, see, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. Like that goon. The, the latest example is that goon from ISUPK. The shit that he was saying, he's been deceived. Right? He's been deceived. 
and the Lord put the spirit on him to be deceived. Okay? The words that he was saying, the Lord put the spirit on him to say those stupid words. So now that sets the stage for the Heavenly Father, through his son, of course, to bring judgment on that individual. Okay? And if the prophet be deceived when he have spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him. <laughs> you know what that means. That ain't nothing good. And I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people. Did we not just re read in the 8th verse, did not the Lord say that that individual will be a sign and a proverb? There you go. There you go. The Lord said he will stretch out his hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of his people. And remember, the Heavenly Father, well, his, his only begotten son, he's passed judgment to his only begotten son, they are the king of terrors. There's a scripture where it says, it is a fearful thing. I think Apostle Paul said that it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Heavenly Father. How about that? Okay, so don't worry about these crazy individuals or their crazy doctrines. Now you know why they've been brought into the ministry. They've been brought to be made an example of. We just pray that we're not those individuals. We just pray we're on the right side and not on the Lord's bad side. Okay, how about that? So that was Ezekiel 14, 8 to 9. Let's go to Matthew. I'm liking the split screen. I, you know, don't have to do too much work to go get the scripture. Matthew 23 and 15. Let's go there. The book of Matthew, the 23rd chapter, the 15th verse. That's what we're here to do, right? We're here to teach the scriptures. Matthew 23 and 15. Warn, now, these, these words are written in red. What does that mean? Th that means that these words were was, was said by our Lord Yahweh Shai. Of course, he said it in Hebrew, and it's, and it's been translated into the King's English, right? Which is what we're reading here. Matthew 23 and 15, warn to you scribes and Pharisees. Now the wicked scribes and the wicked Pharisees were also brought into this thing of ours through something called reincarnation. All right. The Bible teaches reincarnation. Okay. When you speak of generations, that's reincarnation. Anything generated keeps coming back over and over and over again. So it's no different with people. People are generated. The same spirits keep coming back over and over and over again, okay? And they come back every three, uh, pursuant to Exodus, the 20th chapter, goes into it. They come back every three and fourth generation through their family line, preferably their father, particularly their father, because the father, uh, we're generated through our fathers. As a matter of fact, when you look up the word genealogy, you can do this. You can go to etymology.com. You look up the word genealogy. You, do you know what word you'll see there? Fathers. Fathers. Because we're generated through our fathers. We keep coming back through our fathers. Okay? And the Bible teaches this. Anyway, Matthew 23 and 15. Warn to you scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. So you got your hypocrites in this thing of ours. And we clearly see who those guys are. Those are the same spirits Back then, during the time of the Lord, more than 2,000 years ago, the wicked scribes, the wicked Pharisees, the wicked chief priests, they're all back. They're all back, man. Okay? And they're in this ministry. Woe unto you. Woe means destruction, by the way. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. So you got your hypocrites. They're back. For you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. That, the word proselyte means one that is new to the faith. Right? So these guys will go above and beyond <laughs> to make a <laughs> to make a, a, a proselyte, which is, means one new to the faith. And when he is made, <laughs> so when he comes into this thing of ours, right? You make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. So what I get from this is the worst kind of nigga is the one that's in the truth. That's the worst kind of nigga. That's a twofold child of hell, nigga. Okay? And you got him in this thing of ours. You got him in this truth among the different Israelite groups. 
twofold a child of hell. And you can spot them, man. Okay? So again, this scripture proves that the Lord brought in the bad as well. Because you got the hypocrites and they're going and teach. They're, they're going and teach. They're going out there to teach. And the ones they bring in are even, <laughs> are even worse than the niggas out there in the world. Twofold the child of hell. So your worst niggas are the ones in the truth. So be aware of that, you brothers that are new to this and true to this. All right. Be aware of that map. That was Matthew 23 and 15. Remember that scripture. Let's go to the next one. Matthew 13, 47 to 50. I'm showing you facts here. Matthew. Now, this is a parable that Yahweh Shai taught, right? The book of Matthew 13. We're going to go to the 47th verse. All right? It says, um, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net. Now, what's the net? The kingdom of heaven is this knowledge, this truth. It starts there. What's the net? The net is really this Bible. All right? Now, Yahweh Shai told Peter, I'll make you fishes of men, right? What was Peter fishing with? He was fishing, spiritually fishing with this truth, the truth that he learned from Yahweh Shai. So we learned this truth from Yahweh Shai through this Bible. So the Bible is the net, right? Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened, like unto a net that was cast into the sea. The sea is a metaphor for what? The people. All right? The people represents the sea. So when we go out there and teach, we're cast in the net. When we do these videos and put them up on YouTube or any other, any other internet platform, right? Social internet platform. We're cast in the net. We're throwing the net out there. You understand? So that was cast into the net. Like a, a good example is when we came on the scene, GMS in particular, Great Millstone, we came on the scene around 2007, the summer of 2007, we casted our net. We started putting up the videos of our speakings on the street. We cast our net into the sea. The sea represents the people, right? So let's keep reading. It says, that was cast into the, into the sea and gathered of every kind. So what do you think it means of every kind? Good as well as bad good as well as bad okay that's why the name of this video is called good and bad okay so you got your bad that was called in and they were called in pursuant to ezekiel we just read the scripture in ezekiel the 14th chapter they were called in to be made an example of remember what the lord said the bad come in they become what false prophets the lord said i will stretch out my hand upon that false prophet and will make an example out of him you see Remember, this is the Heavenly Father's program. This ain't our program. This is the Heavenly Father's program. This is the Heavenly Father's movie. He's the director. Just like, you know, you have a director now and he's about to uh, do a movie, you have something called a cast. He has the cast for the movie. So he goes out to find the actors that he wants. Now, if it's a good guy, bad guy movie, he's going to go out, he's going to cast for the good guys or the good guy. And then he's going to cast for the bad guys. He's going to bring in both to make his movie. That's his vision, right? It ain't no different with the Heavenly Father. It's nothing but a movie. And he got the good guys and the bad guys. Okay? So don't think it's any different in this thing of ours, you brothers out there. We just hope that we're the good guys. We just hope we're the good kind. That's our hope. This is why the Apostle Paul said we are prisoners of hope. Did he not say that? We are prisoners of hope. Our hope is that we're the good guys. Our hope is that we please Yahweh Bashim Shai in righteousness. Okay, while we're doing this work. That's our hope. All right, so Matthew 13. And uh, we just read the 47 verse. Now let's read the 48 verse. Which when it was full, which we're approaching that time now, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels. What does that mean? Meaning when Yahweh Shai comes with for when Yahweh Shai comes with the deliverance, he's gonna take the good guys, and we know how they're gonna be taken, right? But the bad are gonna be left here. Okay, for judgment. 
okay? But cast the bad away, see? So the point is, brothers, you're going to have the good as well as the bad. You got to understand that. So don't get all emotional when you see the bad teachers out there. Don't get all emotional. They have, they're, they're what you call a necessary evil. They're a necessary evil, okay? We just hope that we're not of the bad. That's our hope, okay? Because when you see the kind of judgments pursuant to Ezekiel, the 14th chapter, where the Lord said, I will stretch out my hand upon that bad, that bad prophet, that bad apostle, that bad teacher, and make an example out of him. When you see, you look, 1 Peter 4 and 17, judgment will begin where? There you go. When you see the kind of judgments, remember the heavenly father and his only begotten son is what? The king of terrors, right? So when you see the kind of judgments <laughs> that Yahweh Hashem Yeshai is going to bring on those individuals, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to be glad that you're one of the good ones, okay? <laughs> there you go. All right, so the 49th verse, so shall it be at the end of the world, the angel shall come forth and sever the wicked from the just. There you go. So you're going to have both. You're going to have the wicked and you're going to have the just. The wicked is going to receive a good reward. I'm saying the wicked is going to receive a good reward. I said that backwards. The just is going to receive a good reward. The wicked is going to receive a bad reward. All right, there you go. The 50th verse. And shall cast them into the furnace of fire. What is that? That's the nuclear destruction, right? Also, the fire that's going to be coming from the chariots when Yahweh comes back. And there's so many scriptures that prove that, right? Hell, one scripture that comes to mind is Luke 12 and 49. Yahweh said, I'm coming to send fire upon the earth. And what will, will I if it already be uh, kindled? So there you go. 50th verse. And shall cast them into the furnace of of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. <laughs> All right, so I don't have to explain that, right? Let's go to the next one. We're going to the book of Malachi, the third chapter and the 16th verse. Let's read that. Now, this is a scripture I quoted a little earlier where it's your job to discern between, since you know now, you brothers that are new to this, especially you guys, I'm really speaking to you brothers, since you know now that the Heavenly Father have brought in the wicked teachers, the bad teachers, it's your job to discern between the two. It's your job to know who are the good teachers and who are the bad teachers. That's your job. And here, let me read the scripture right there to prove that. We're going to Malachi, the third chapter. See, through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, I'm putting you up on game now. Now you know the deal. Now you know the Heavenly Father brought in the good as well as the bad. That might have been something you didn't consider. Now you're considering it. Okay? So now it's your job to discern. And what does the word discern mean? Look it up. I could look it up for you, but I don't want you to be lazy. Okay? Malachi, the third chapter, the 16th verse. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written. What's the book? This Bible, it brings us back to our remembrance of who we are, how we serve the Heavenly Father in righteousness. It brings us back to our laws, statutes, and commandments the Heavenly Father gave us. It brings us back to the true nature of the Heavenly Father and His Son. It brings us back to everything we need to know, okay? So that's why it's known as the Book of Remembrance. And as a matter of fact, going back to the Italian, I always bring out the, the Italian word for reckon, is ricordati. Ricordati, which means to remember. All right, the Italian word for remember is ricordati. That's where you get the word record from. You, you have records so you can remember, okay? Things are recorded so you can remember. No different with the Bible, right? So it says, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. That's us. We fear the Lord. You know, one of the reasons why these bad teachers do what they do, they don't fear the Lord. So when you, you have to look, if you're looking at the bad teacher, you have to look at, does this guy fear the Lord? Trust me, if you fear the Lord, you know, it's just a saying, trust me. If you fear the Lord, you're not going to do the stupid shit these bad teachers do. You're not going to say the stupid shit these bad teachers say. Because you fear the Lord. That's why that's a blessed, that's a gift. To fear the Lord, to fear Yahweh Hashem Yahshai is truly a gift because it keeps you in line. It keeps you on the straight and narrow. 
because you fear you think twice before you do something like these guys they turn the Passover into a fashion show they don't fear the Lord here is the, the Passover I'm giving you an example the Passover is supposed to be a solemn assembly but you got certain clowns that turn the Passover into a fashion show they do not fear the Lord they have no fear of the Lord they're just like Esau Esau has no fear of the Lord period that's why he does what he does okay so you got to look out for that you look at a guy this guy does this guy fear the Lord if you see he doesn't fear the Lord trust me there's nothing he, there's nothing reprobate he won't do he doesn't fear the Lord right makes sense <laughs> well there you go so you look for a guy who fears the Lord if he fears the Lord he's going to watch beginning with himself he's going to watch how he acts okay He's good. Like the Apostle Paul said, I keep under my body. Why did the Apostle Paul say he keep under his body? Because he feared the Lord. He feared the Lord. Now, you see, with those guys, right, that don't fear the Lord, that's why the Lord is getting ready to bring judgment. Now, based upon that judgment, they're going to learn the fear of the Lord <laughs> when they see the kind of judgments the Heavenly Father is going to bring. And some guys, head is like, case in point, I got to mention him. Deacon Asaph, don't get upset. Talking about your, your boy, the megalomaniac, Bishop Nathaniel. He doesn't fear the Lord. Head is the, the Heavenly Father brought sickness upon him and then healed him, and he's even more proud than before. He doesn't fear the Lord. If he feared the Lord, well, he doesn't fear the Lord. He don't even call the name of the Lord. He makes, he makes fun of the name of the Lord and his only begotten son. What more proof do you need he don't fear the Lord? See? So you got to watch out for those guys who don't fear the Lord, man. Fear the heavenly. When I say the Lord, I'm talking about the heavenly father and his only begotten son. Okay. You should know that. So uh, going back to the scripture and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. See, very important to fear the Lord because it keeps you. It, it keeps us. I keep saying you. It keeps us right. It keeps us on the straight and narrow. You know, before we do anything. We, we ask, we say in our minds, should I be doing this? Would Yahweh Shemel Shai be pleased with me if I'm doing this or if I'm saying this? If the answer is no, you don't do it. That is a fear of the Lord. That's, that's reverence, that's respect to Yahweh Shemel Shai. See? So, uh, a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Oh, <laughs> that's a cold cut. You got guys that make fun of the name of the Lord and his only begotten son. <laughs> How about that? Anyway, let me keep reading to get to the point. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Right, the ones who fear the Lord, think upon his name. There you go. Uh, in that day when I make up my jewels, they're his jewels, and we hope we're part of that group, the Lord's jewels, right? And I will spare them as a man spare of his own son that serveth him. Spare them from what? The judgment the Heavenly Father is getting ready to bring. The horrendous judgment, the horrific judgment. You're gonna spare them, right? And we hope we're of that group, right? Then shall I then then shall ye, then shall ye, us, you, us, right? Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. So it's your job, right? It's your job out there, you brothers out there, to discern between the righteous and the wicked, because both of them are in this thing of ours. The righteous as well as the wicked the good as well as the bad. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth the heavenly father and him that serveth him not. It's our job, man, to discern. And clearly the examples are out there, brothers. Look at the examples. All right, look for the clues. Does this guy fear the Lord? I'm, I'm telling you, if a guy fears the Lord, and his only begotten son. He's not going to do that stupid shit you see these other guys doing. Because he fears Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. See? Never forget that. Now, finally, the last scripture is Jude. Now, recently, um, Elder Yashwamba, he did a video. Well, no, I'm sorry. He didn't do a video. He, he, he uh, brought out some information. That's what he did. He brought out some information um, and he sent it to me on the book of Jude. Now, this Jude, I'm just giving you a backstory. This Jude was the brother, biological brother of Yahweh Shai. 
And the reason why Jude wrote his book is because in his days, there were a lot of apostates. What, what is an apostate? That's one who fell from the truth. That's one who fell from the faith. You had a lot of guys falling from the faith that Yahweh Shai had taught, which they learned from the apostles. Okay, and then the men that came up underneath Apostle Paul. You know, they, they kept it for a while and then they fell from it and they started teaching doctrines, right, that were against it. They would use some of it, some of what was taught, some of Yahweh Shai's doctrines, they would use it and mix it with other philosophies. And we see that happening today. Good example is that group um, uh, ITR, which <laughs> they, they, they totally went under underground. Okay, you don't even see them no more. All right, and they were once part of us. As a matter of fact, uh, the scripture comes to mind: First uh, John two and twenty. Let's get that as, as a as a extra. First John two and twenty. So that's why Jude wrote his book. He wrote, he wrote his book to warn the true men of why you have all these apostates, okay? Let's get 1 John 2 and 20, I think it is. 1 John 2 and 20. Uh, is it 2 and 19? Yeah, 2 and 19 actually. Well, let me start at uh, 18. Another title for the apostates is the Antichrist. They are indeed the Antichrist because the term Antichrist means against the anointed. You see, the ones that the Lord have truly called, which we hope we are of that group, we're the anointed. So anyone that's against us is the Antichrist, meaning against the anointed. The term Antichrist means against the anointed, right? So 1 John 2 and 18, little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. There you go, against the anointed. Even now are there many antichrists. So that's, that's your bad teachers, your false apostles, your false prophets, your false teachers. They're the antichrist because in reality, they're against the anointed. Okay? So there are many antichrists. Whereby we know that it is the last time. That's how we know. You see all these crazy, bugged out individuals popping up now? In this ministry, that's, that's a sign that we're in the last time. We're in the last days, the very last days. That's a sign. And there are going to be more guys popping up. Um, who, who was it that said, um, there shall be false teachers among you? I forgot who it was, but he said, there shall be false teachers among you. Okay? That's a sign of the last time, like it says here in First John. Go into the 19th verse. They went out from us, but they were not of us. See? They went out from us, but they were not of us. A good example is your ITR. They were part of us, but they went out from us because they were really not of us. And it's, there's going to be more. There's going to be more guys falling off and, and venturing into crazy doctrines. Okay? Why? Because they have been deceived. Remember Ezekiel? Go back to the list. Ezekiel, the 14th chapter. Remember the Lord said, I deceived that man and I will stretch out my hand upon him and destroy him. Remember that? You see, that's why they went out from us, but they were not of us because the Heavenly Father put the Spirit on them to go off. So if a man goes off in this truth, it's because the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, put the Spirit on that man to go off. Remember the scripture, man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? <laughs> man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? This is why King David wisely said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Yahweh Bashim Shai. Those are those are powerful words, man. Okay? And that's what we're praying. We're praying that we're acceptable in your sight, O Yahweh Bashim Shai. Please have mercy. That's why, man, it's a good idea and a good attitude daily to say to Yahweh Bashim Shai, please have mercy upon me, O Yahweh Bashim Shai. Please have mercy upon me. Don't let me go off. Don't make me go off. Please make me a righteous instrument for your work. That's the prayer we got to pray, brothers. I keep telling you, brothers, man, you got to pray, man. You got to pray, especially in these times. Anyway, let's read it again. 1 John 2 and 19. They went out from us, but they were not, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. 
but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. See? And that you can bring in Ezekiel 14 chapter. They went out because the Heavenly Father put the spirit of, uh, of them to be deceived. Put the spirit of delusion upon them. They were deceived by the Heavenly Father. Then the Heavenly Father is going to turn around and judge them and make an example to the men he want out of them. Now, how powerful is that, man? That's how the Heavenly Father get down, man. And when I say the Heavenly Father, I'm talking about the Heavenly Father is only begotten Son because the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, has passed judgment now to his Son. So his Son is at the helm, okay? You got guys that say, oh, we shouldn't worship Yahweh Shai. Oh, yeah? Okay. You keep that attitude. Anyway, uh, Jude, let's finish this uh, lesson with Jude, the first chapter. We're going to go right through it. I'm not going to, because I'm already at the, the 40th minute. Try to go to the 45th minute and end this video. Because Jake's attention span ain't that long anyway. So let's, let's do this. Jude, the first chapter, the fourth verse. It says, For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. What scripture comes into mind? Ezekiel, the 14th chapter, where the Lord said, I will create the false prophet, make an example out of him, and stretch out my hand and destroy him. Okay, there you go. So you have certain guys brought into this thing to be made examples of. Guys that are not right. Okay, you're bad ones. Okay? For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of all ordained to this condemnation. So they were ordained. Now how powerful is that? How scary is that? We just hope we're not of, the, of that group. All right? Those of us who want to do the right thing. Who fear Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. That's why you can't really go wrong if you fear Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. <laughs> because you ain't going to do the things to piss him off. Okay? Remember, it is written, kiss the sun, lest he be angry, right? Psalm 2 and 12. Anyway, who were before of all ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men. There you go. Turning the grace of our power into lasciviousness. Yeah, with the throwing the lavish parties on the Passover, which is supposed to be a solemn assembly. They have no fear of the Lord, man. Bringing guns to camp when the scriptures do not say to do that. You know, making statements like, uh, yeah, if he was under my counsel, I would tell him to have sex with that man's wife, you know, stupid shit like that, you know, there you go, now you know why, these men were ordained to this condemnation, now the Lord can turn around and judge them, and make an example out of them, okay, turning the grace of our power into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord, and, and denying the only Lord God, which is Yahweh, and the Lord Yahweh Shai, there you go, well, jump down to the 8th verse, I'm gonna bounce around, Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. <laughs> filthy dreamers. <laughs> J. Jude was getting down, man. Likewise, <laughs> he called them filthy dreamers. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers. And this was Yahushua's brother, by the way. So keep that in mind. Likewise, also these, his biological brother, okay? Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. They certainly do. Like that, that goon from the ISUPK, he defiles our flesh, man. Uh, despised dominion. Yeah, they, they, the Heavenly Father have set up the, the government. Uh, well, the Heavenly Father through his son, Yahushua, have set up the government. And really, the government begins with GMS, Great Millstone, starting with Elder Pastor Har. But we're despised, man. They, they, they call us the, the worst camp in Israel, which is actually a compliment. Okay. <laughs> Uh, despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. There you go. Uh, jumping down to the 10th verse. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally is brute beasts. That's another title for them, brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves. So you clearly see that those guys have been brought into the ministry to be made an example of. Let's go to the 12th verse. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Oh my goodness, without fear. They do not fear the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son. They have no fear. That's why they do what they do. That's why it's a blessing if you have the fear of Yahweh Shem Yahshai. It's truly a blessing because it keeps you on the straight and narrow. Okay? When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water. <laughs> I mean, they have no knowledge. Like that goon from the SUPK. He's a cloud without water. Carried about of winds, <laughs> meaning different doctrines. Trees whose fruit withered. Without fruit, 
twice dead, plucked up by the roots. <laughs> Do I have to explain that? <laughs> uh, we're going to, the 13th verse, raging waves of the sea, forming out their own shame, <laughs> raging waves of the sea, them niggas talking all kind of shit, like that goon from ISUPK, he's the latest example, nothing but a raging wave from the sea. You know his mind is like a raging, within his mind, it's like a raging sea. That's why he, he says shit like, uh, John the Baptist is a plate of fish. Uh, if I say John the Baptist is a plate of fish, pass me the hot sauce. I would teach uh, Chris Rock, I would counsel Chris Rock. He'd use the word, he had the nerve to use the word counsel. Who the hell would take counsel from a guy who made that statement? If, if I say John the Baptist is a plate of fish, pass me the hot sauce. Who would take counsel from a guy like that? Who would take counsel from a megalomaniac who acts like he's the savior of the nation of Israel? You know who I'm talking about. These guys are raging waves of the sea, man, forming out their own shame and that, that joke of a Passover that they had. I'm talking about, you know, that group, I-U-I-C, who can't see. Come on, man. Raging waves of the sea. There's your example. What more proof do you need? Forming out their own shame, forming out their own shame. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the darkness or the blackness of darkness forever. There you go. You got certain Israelite groups think every Israelite's supposed to look like John Schaff or Buckwheat, you know? Jude spoke about those guys more than 2,000 years ago, and we're reading it now, okay? Uh, jumping down to the 16th verse, it says, These are murmurs, or murmurs, 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 complainers, which basically means the same thing, walking after their own lusts. And a lot of these guys, they have the lust for, they want uh, recognition. They want power, you know. Forget about Yahushai getting his first. No, they don't think like that. They want to be the, they want to be that dude. They want to be worshipped, you know. <laughs> they walk after their own lust. Some lust for money. They want lots and lots and lots of money. They look at the truth as being a vehicle to make a lot of money, become rich. You know, as it is written, uh, Proverbs 23 and 9, labor not to become rich. We labor to become rich in the spirit, not rich in carnal things, you know. But anyway, that's another video for another time. Walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaketh great swelling words. Yeah, they, they, they're known for their speeches too. Having men's persons in admiration because of the advantage. Yeah, and most of the, the guys who follow them are just as simple as they are, Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's keep reading. Um, 17, but beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before. Who's the beloved? Those that understand and know the truth. Those are the good kind. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Yahweh Shai, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. And we've been telling you that. Beginning of the apostle Tower down, we've been telling you there's going to be mockers, right? Guys who ain't right. And you've seen it, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts, ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. Yeah, they're of the world. They don't really have the spirit. And remember what Malachi said. We read that scripture. Malachi said it's your job to discern between the two, who has the spirit and who doesn't. Okay, that's your job. You brothers out there. All right, so on that note, I'll leave it there. Hopefully you were edified. This has been good and bad, and hopefully you were edified by this video. Shalom for now.